please join me for the uh -uh. pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the October 5th, 2015 Selectman's Meeting. First, we have public comment. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, we'll move to announcements. Mr. Wardell? Uh, no, I have nothing right now. Mr. Bridal? All set, thank you. Mr. Bean? Nothing, sir. And Mrs. Walsley? Uh, yes, we send uh, our sincere condolences to the police department in Northampton and to Officer Cormier's family. Uh, we were very saddened to hear uh, f from the chief uh, what happened, and, and we're sorry that uh, for his loss. Moving on to the consent agenda. First, we have the Mosquito Control Commission appointment of Timothy O'Connor to a three-year term. Two is SAU number 21, request to release impact fees, 47384 cents. <coughs> Three is an acceptance of a warranty deed at Harrison Fellow Ave from Hampton River Marina. Four is cemetery deeds for two people. Mr. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, um, could we add Mr. Diener's request f to uh, <clears throat> ask for a grant for part-time help? May that be part of the consent agenda? I assume everybody got the... You can. It is legally on the agenda, so it can be moved anywhere. Okay, we'll move that into the consent agenda. And then I have a, a problem with that warranty deed land. Uh, I, I am happy to move the rest of the consent agenda, one, two, four, and five, but I'd like the warranty deed land pulled out for a separate vote. I'm just plain not going to vote for it. So. Okay. But, but I don't want to penalize so the other. So did you want to make a, a, a motion? Yes, to accept on the consent agenda one, two, four, and five. Uh, that means uh, number five being Mr. Diener's request for the grant application. Is there a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Then we have acceptance of warranty deed at Harris and fellow avenues from Hampton River Marina LLC. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. We accept the warrant. Uh, I'll second it. All those in favor? I'm opposed. Four and one opposed. Thank you. Moving on to appointments, we have Jane Cipher, Town Clerk, 2016 Budget Review. Good evening, Jane. Good evening. Page three. Yep. First, if I can say thank you for rescheduling me from last Wednesday. I had a family matter that arose last Wednesday that prevented me from Whoops, page making my two. appointment here. Page two. Page two. Okay. That? Yep. Um, rather than go through my budget line by line, I thought it would be more effective to highlight just the changes um, from 2015 to 2016. The town clerk's office budget is divided into three sections, town clerk, voter registration, and election administration. Under the town clerk section, the lines with an increase are part-time wages. Again, this year I have added a new part-time file clerk for 16 hours per week at $11 per hour. This was submitted for the 2015 budget, but because the budget did not pass, the file clerk was not hired. Included in your packet is a photo of just one of the many drawers <coughs> of filing that is backed up due to the flow of customers um, at our office. <clears throat> in the photo, each elastic band represents one day, and at our busiest times have seen three full drawers, just like the one that you see in the picture. Um, in addition to the registrations, um, there's filing of title applications and various other duties that will easily keep that person busy for 16 hours a week. Um, additionally, the town clerk wages, also in your packet, is a spreadsheet of comparable wages for town clerks based on population. 
the first version is alphabetical, the second is sorted by population, the third is sorted by annual salary, the fourth is sorted by <coughs> annual, reven annual revenue collected, and the last is sorted by number of vehicles registered annually. Hampton is mid-range in population in this survey, highest in number of motor, vehicle regis motor vehicles registered and annual revenue collected, yet the lowest in annual salary. Like the tax collector, I have submitted for a 9% increase in salary for 2016. This is to correspond with the 9% recommended by the town manager at the Selectmen and the Budget Committee in 2014. This 9% increase still does not bring the town clerk's salary within the range of comparative survey. Although taking into consideration the comparative towns do not have the summer influx of residents that Hampton has. Um, also changed under the town clerk section is overtime wages. Because of the nature of a busy election year, overtime um, needs to increase. We have a full election year, and having my staff available for addition, additional hours is a necessity. Under the voter registration section, um, I've increased part-time wages because we have so many busy elections this year. The supervisors need additional help registering voters at the polls. Because we only had the town election last year, and we all know the voter turnout for town elections is extremely low, the supervisors do not require assistance during that one election. In 2016, we have four elections plus the deliberative session. The primaries aren't necessarily the busiest elections, but they are usually the high in voter registration numbers. In addition, at the presidential election in 2012, the supervisors of the checklist registered 888 voters. Under the election administration section, um, the ballot clerk wages, again, because of the number of elections we have in 2016 as compared to 2015, the need for more funding for ballot clerks at the several elections is up. No, not only is the need there for the number of elections, but also for the type of elections. The presidential election is historically the busiest of all elections. We increase the number of ballot clerks for each shift of the election due to higher volume of voter turnout. Um, town meeting expense. The food service for four sessions was increased from to four from one at $600 each, which increased the line item by $1,800. Um, additionally, I just realized today while I was reviewing everything that the um, printing of and folding of warrants was removed from my budget last year, but I had forgotten to take it out when I did the uh, presentation for this year. So you can reduce that line item by $500, bringing it to $3,300, and that's under town meeting expense. And then um, election, expense, election expenses, once again, because of the number of elections, the coding for the AccuVote memory cards increases, bringing that line item to $21,150 from $17,850 from last year. So my bottom line presented, um, presented budget, uh, making that, taking that $500 out of town meeting expense would be $252,384 which is 9% more than 2015, mostly because of the number of elections present in 2016 as compared to 2015. Well, I am happy to take any questions you may have. Mr. Waddell. I, I, I don't have really any questions. I mean, you did a good job of explaining exactly why it's going up and there's nothing we can do about the elections. We've got to have them, right? right. You've yeah. got you to supervise them. You've got to put the people out there to do it or else, that, you know, we're in trouble. Uh, how about where the supplies and expenses went down so much? Um, in the town clerk portion of the budget? Yeah. Um, we had, I think, $8,000 in there for uh, book binding, and we've been able to catch up on that, so I reduced that significantly because it's not, not needed at this point. Okay, good. We yeah. had a lot of books that needed to be uh, restored um, when I first came on, and little by little, we've been able to to get through all of those. So pretty much, the vault is is up to date. And the only thing that I need to um, to bind annually is the all the vital records that happen in those years, and then the um, and then the minutes from the deliberative session. Okay, super. <clears throat> I think you do a great job. Great budget presentation. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Thank you for your presentation, Jane. The only thing uh, question that I've had in the past is from. Uh, people that come in Friday afternoons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's all due to the budget and due to your man hours and stuff. Um, has there ever been any thought to uh, increasing staff to cover that or? Well, what the, the, way, the reason why it started, um, we started closing on Friday afternoons is back in 2009, um, 
we started to see a lot of people um, mm -hmm. inquiring about our hours not being early enough and late enough in the day. So our hours at that time were 9 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. So 9 was too late for people that needed to travel. They could get in at 8 o'clock, but they couldn't get in at 9. And then 4.30, obviously, was you know, too early in the afternoon for them to get there. Um, so I actually put um, an article out into the paper giving an idea of what I was considering for changing the office hours to try and make it easier for people to get in. And I received nine responses because I was looking for feedback. And I got nine responses, and eight out of the nine were positive. Um, and in trying to keep that, the, the hours um, pursuant to the contractual obligations, um, we had to take those hours from somewhere when we went eight to five. So adding people on, I don't think the, I mean, you, it, it, there's a lot involved in that to have people on just for Friday afternoon. Right. Um, so, no, I haven't really considered that, to be perfectly honest with you. People now know that we're closed. Most people know that we're closed on Friday afternoons. Um, and there are a lot of town offices that are closed completely on Friday. So, you know, just trying to, to um, make the hours. We, we do have two and a half more hours weekly than we did before 2009. So. Okay, well, I just wanted to ask that so people nope. outside would know, nope, I'm glad know you what did. that what that's about, you and uh, you know we've had that that's been the only uh, mm -hmm. concern that people have had is, you know we've come in and and I said well it's been that way for a while, right. and now you say it's 2009 yeah. it's been that way so it was six it was six years in April, so <clears> that, um, <throat> hopefully people are going to get used to that system, but mm -hmm. you do an excellent job, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wolseley. <clears throat> yes, Jane. If someone proposed a warrant article to add a second polling place, just as a, an if, mm -hmm. what would that do to you and your staff? <clears throat> to my staff in my office? Mm. Well, yeah, for, the, for really, the election. It wouldn't do anything for my staff in my office. Well, I know that. As, as far as the election itself, yeah. it would almost double the staff. I wouldn't say it would double it. Right. It, we're, Bob and I have actually talked about it. Yeah. Um, we're figuring, you know, it would be maybe instead of eight people on the line mm -hmm. um, checking in voters, it would be six at two locations, yeah. you know, six each. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it would it definitely increase. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Yeah. But um, it's it would certainly wouldn't double. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, a very nice budget. I just uh, want to point out from my perspective that I think we have no authority over your salary because you are an elected official. So I'm happy to let that go through to the budget committee and they're the ones who can do what they do. But a very nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Reem. I have no question, young lady. Fabulous job and you run a great department. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for coming in tonight, and I Thanks. hope everything goes well at the Budget Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Moving on to Chief Ayotte, 2016 Budget Review, and Deputy Chief Kennedy. Page Good evening, everybody. How are you tonight? Super fine. Good. How are you doing? Um, what we have here, if you'll recall last year when I sat before you, I said that I'd like to make this as quick as possible, and I asked you to turn to the last page. In doing so, I had told you about the 1% increase, which was primarily due to contractual obligations. This year, we were um, working to keep a level-funded budget as best as possible, so I will describe in detail all of the changes, but if you could humor me for just a moment, and we turn to the last page of my budget, um, we see that after town managers assisted us, we're looking for a $3.4 million budget, $3,440,395. That's a 1.64% increase over last year. The reason for that, is, we'll go through it as we talk about it, but primarily this is uh, as a result of known changes due to our heating, um, fuel, and electricity and water costs for our new buildings. That's where the, the big chunk of change comes for our changes right now. 
Um, in the beginning, we have very small minor changes to our uh, administration portion. There is an addition that you'll see with tuition reimbursement. That was a line item that was created and installed by the town manager and assistant town manager as a result of contractual obligations uh, to meet with the Hampton town policy, um, the personnel policy, so that we can assist with tuition reimbursement. There was no line item previously scheduled for that, and that's there so that we're able to meet that obligation. Uh, if we look to fire suppression, we have two line items that call for a 3 and a 4% change. And these are contractual obligations and step raises. They're all accounted for within that. Uh, let's see. The protective clothing, as you'll see, a 33% increase. That's at $16,000. Uh, as you all know, we have had a very changing year. And the addition of four new firefighters uh, within the last 12 months or in, in the um, next four months to conclude it will cause a problem with the addition of gear because we need to hire them and, and purchase gear for them. Uh, that's what that line is there to, to help us replace. Uh, we have a reduction as a result of changes that we made in the line items and how we're carrying, uh, where we put the, the differences in um, mechanisms for valve replacement and, and uh, assistance with that. Um, we have a 29% reduction that you'll see next week is due to the uh, liquidation of a PO that we had held encumbered for some time now. Um, when we look at fire prevention, we have a 19% increase in gasoline. We hope to, and it's part of the warrant items, to see a fire inspector, as we've seen before. I put in this budget the gasoline for the automobile that they would be driving just so that we would have that as a means so that they wouldn't be walking and thumbing a ride. Um, the new equipment, you'll see that we have in there costs associated with a Canon copier that we had purchased. It's a color laser printer, actually not a copier, a printer, um, along with the additional items for our permits of assembly, specialized paper so that there's uh, no means to copy that or to change it and forge it. Um, when it comes to training, we see a 22% increase there. The reason for that is because we have known costs and we also have an increase in staff that are going to require that. As we hire new firefighters, they're coming in and they need to have medical background checks, um, background checks as far as uh, police histories and things like that. We've known now that the costs have been increasing in medical health care for quite some time. For us to perform a uh, health care screening prior to um, employment, we're seeing now it's about, it's between $1,500 and $1,600 for one candidate. Um, at the end, the large jump, comes in the fire stations and buildings. This is the 4,100 for 10 items. So we have an electric change of 89%. We have a heating fuel change of 27%. Water, 600%. Uh, where does that come from? It's very simple to understand that we've been in the buildings for a year now. We've had experience with the bills that they're sending to us, and so therefore I've adjusted the budget to accommodate them. Up until now, we've been taking it from other places, and that's been very difficult to do. So this is actual costs, so we pass that on now so that you're able to see what it is costing us. Building maintenance, um, floor maintenance, and all other items with it, there's been an increase in charges because we have more building. Um, we just uh, executed a PO for washing and waxing the floors. They had never been done. So the stations look tremendous right now, but that was encumbered money. Moving forward, we have to stay on that with a preventative maintenance schedule. Um, I do believe that that sums up all of our budget to show the increases and the reasons why are, as I outlined. Do you have any questions? Mr. <laughs> your, your fire gear. Yes, sir. It has to be replaced, what, every 10 years now? That's correct. Um, according to the uh, was it NFPA standards. NFPA. Yep. Yep. So uh, that's one of the reasons why, again, this budget is. Actually, the, I, have a, I have a warrant article also that requests six sets of fire gear as a, as, a, um, as a program replacement, part of the program replacement. As we had talked about last year, I'm hoping to do a program replacement for gear that's um, older right now so that we can get on a program of replacing four sets every year and that way there in 2019 when it comes to pass, which is coming quickly, as you all know, we'll have to buy 33 sets of gear. I'm trying to stem that off and defray the costs over the course of the next four years. However, this year we find ourselves having to purchase 
four additional sets of gear for new firefighters. So as they come through the door, this is fit gear. They're measured out. You know, we, we certainly can't wear the same size, and you and I can't wear the same size gear. So this is fit to the firefighter. It's uh, tailor-made, and it's expensive. <coughs> but it prevents burns, and it provides safety for them, so we have to do that. Uh, looking forward, we're going to be replacing four sets with this particular budget, but I'm taking it from this year to buy the new one. And thank you. Yes, and sir. part of your increase in your, your water budget is, I know previously w when the stations were built, they did not have sprinkler systems. No, sir, they them. did not. And so now with, with the installation of uh, dedicated lines to those buildings, is an additional cost to that, correct? Two six-inch lines that are coming in, yeah. The, this is real numbers. So uh, previously it was domestic water only and now it's domestic water plus the sprinkler lines and so with that comes the increase in charge um, all of our buildings now are code compliant and I'm very pleased to report that so that's uh, that's certainly a step in the right direction well I think uh, I think the fire department is in good hands right now I think the, the things are going well we've had a lot of uh, good com good comments on fire prevention and, and how things are going for the people in the town and uh, I think the people really appreciate it so thank you thank you sir Mrs. Walsley. <clears throat> That's a pretty compact way to introduce a budget. Thank you. Uh, very, very concise. I do have a few questions. Okay. How many firefighters are still out on disability or whatever? How many? We had a new one go out this week, um, oh, personal great. injury, and he's going to be out for the next three months. Wonderful. Fingers in hand. Oh, God. Um, we have uh, two that remain out as a long term disability. So that uh, total of three right now, uh, four, I'm sorry, there's four. I have had uh, news that one has put in looking for a means to medically retire from the department, but okay. that's, that's out of our department right now. That's at the state level. Right. So. So with a complement of 28 that's firefighters, where it's supposed to be, correct. you're down to 24. Correct. Uh, okay. Uh, um, one is a, one, just so that we're clear and, and I'm not misstating myself, one is a fire alarm operator, right? Uh, three are firefighters. Oh, okay. So I you, also have two open positions right now yeah, that I, we're working hard I to know fill. I you do. Yeah. So okay. um, Deputy Kennedy has already had the oral boards, and on Tuesday next week we're right. doing the physical skills, so we're looking to fill those positions. I, I hate trying to run this department on 20, 25 whatever firefighters. That's scary. They're working hard and they're doing a great job. I know, I know. We need more. Um, on, let's see, page 26, you've got the gasoline. Um, Chris, gas prices, now the, it doesn't say diesel there. So I'm assuming it's regular gas. You're talking page the, 16, ma'am. I don't page, see the same page number you do. Are you looking under fire prevention? Page 26, the top of the page. That's the chief and deputy, this, this gasoline. The okay. detail part. Sorry. But that's, it doesn't look like it's diesel, but no, diesel is a separate fuel the item. gas prices have have kind of popped down. So They have currently. Yep. Uh, we operate with state bid and DOT prices, so mm -hmm. ours, ours don't fluctuate up as high. Okay. And when we see the lows, they certainly do drop down when everything else comes low. Generally speaking, yeah. though, when you are paying a higher price yeah. at the pump, we're paying much more even. Okay. So it's a flatter rate. Okay. We don't see the spikes that you would see on a daily basis. Okay. And dealing with the state, they probably don't give you the credits fast enough. They, don't. they don't, but you know what? They also don't bump us. They do it once a year. We see, uh, we see the changes in what the, we're going to be paying, and it's certainly much more reasonable than, uh, than other. Okay. So. That sounds good. On page 27. And Rusty's just touched on the turnout gear. First of all, what's what's the rationale for 2019 coming up? You said you'd have to replace so all of your gear. So in 2009, a grant was obtained to purchase gear. Right. And 33 sets of gear were purchased at the time. Right. So with that 33 sets of gear, their 10-year lifespan okay. uh, will be up in 2019. Okay. Um, we've already purchased new sets for some people. Uh, uh, we've had, I know that Lieutenant Gannon got paint on him during a fire that, you know, he was crawling around, there was paint on the floor, yeah. gets on your gear, that that's, yeah. doesn't go well with gear, buy a new set of pants. Uh, somebody else's jacket is torn, we get it repaired, and then it's torn again, you have to get a new jacket. So wear and tear. It is absolutely wear and tear. And um, as we have seen, we are hiring new firefighters. Yes. Um, when I got hired here first in 2012, we hired three firefighters, and only one saw a new set of gear. Kyle Averill, who, if you've met him, 
He was very <laughs> tall. And it wasn't going to fit in anything we had. So he got new gear. The other two guys that were hired, Kyle Jamison and Seth Butler, they got... Hand-me-downs. Hand That's right. They, they certainly got hand-me-downs. Uh, we've been working to get them their new gear. But generally speaking, the 33 sets are coming to turn in 2019. Okay. Has the new washing facilities in the new stations now <clears throat> helped you on the oh, turn of gear? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, there's a new report out last week discussing carcinogens in firefighters' gear, mm -hmm. primarily in the hoods. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you wear your hood, you put your hood up, you go in the fire, you come out and it stays around your neck. Yeah. Um, we have the ability to put it into an extractor, and right. then we have the dryers, which help us yep. tremendously. So, yep. yeah, for the safety of the, of the personnel. But that's good. You really are seeing because it's great. I'm excited that we finally have Certainly. them in the The other thing the that we did, too, with this building, we have um, what used to be fire prevention and the fire prevention secretary. That's our gear locker, mm -hmm. if you will. And at the beach station, we have the same. Uh, no UV light. We lost a couple of lieutenant's jackets and I think a captain's jacket to UV light because it was just exposed all day. While they weren't oh. there, it was, you remember, sir, where they were kept. They were out by the engine. <clears throat> the light would come through the window, and it would burn the shoulder. So now UV light has damaged the gear that hasn't been damaged by fire. Oh, so we've replaced a couple of jackets due to that, too. And now with the addition of this darkened space, UV protected, um, our gear's going to last long. Who would think of that? No, I never would have thought of that. And you have your now your exhaust hoses now, fortunately, which we never had in the station. Correct. So you think that's helping a little bit too? Certainly. Yep. Yeah. For the safety of the firefighters, absolutely. Okay, great. Um, you go through this faster than I, I do. do so. uh, and you've got the drug testing in here. I do. And has the leak been like really finally perfectly fixed at the beach station no uh and I, <laughs> they have been working so hard you know and god bless them these guys have changed so many different things they've re-roofed the area they put a new cricket on they've um they've actually resheathed the outside they've done a tremendous amount of work and we're finding that it's moving um just in our last storm um i believe it was over the last weekend uh, we had rain coming inside again, and Lieutenant Weiser was there, and he told me this morning where he saw it. It was three steps up. So if you go to the new fire station yeah. down at the beach, you going in the east stairwell, three steps up, look up, that's where it's coming in. They've done a tremendous amount of work under that window. They still haven't isolated that leak. They're coming back. I've already spoken with Ekman, and they've been very forthcoming. And if you've driven down at the beach, you've seen that they have the lift out there. They're out there spraying water trying to find it. It's difficult to find because in a 40-mile-an-hour driving wind rainstorm, it leaks. But it's hard to recreate that with a god knows. Yeah. So. Well, as long as they continue to keep on it, but I'm I have disappointed. No, I have all the faith in the world that they're going to. Yeah, that's, I'm disappointed in having that. They are too. That got <laughs> me. That got me to the end of your budget. Great job, gentlemen. Thank you, man. Great job. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Chief Fixo, no questions. Great job. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Waddell. Chris, you guys look sharp. With this. Badges all shined up. <laughs> you know, you do too. I like the, uni <laughs> the uniforms. I didn't say. The yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, you answered all the questions. I had to, everything that I had I, I highlighted. You answered. Wonderful. So that's glad that's to good. do it. Works fine. So great. Thank great you. Job. All right. I sit before you too, and I've been told that I'm going to answer questions on another budget. Is that not the case? Hydrates. You know about that one. If you want to tackle hydrants as part of the department, that's fine. I really don't, but Christy said that I had to, so I will. No, I guess I you're said, stuck. Well, I just warned you that sometimes you're asked about hydrants. That's true. That's um, and, you brought up. and I did bring it up, and that is uh, lesson number one for Mr. Sullivan, if he's watching right now, not to do. Um, so as it stands right now, this this does is a timely subject for me, and if I can, I'll take a moment to to really reiterate the need for ownership of hydrants. We don't own them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is an Aquarian system, and they come in, they maintain the hydrants, they do all the flow testing, they do a tremendous job. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as it goes, if one goes out of service, they're on it, and I have all the faith in the world that they are. When it comes to snowfall, they do a great job of bringing out a front end loader and assisting us, but mostly it's the firefighters who are out there, you know, with a shovel and, yeah. and just digging all day. And you've done that, we've mm -hmm. all done that. So, the, you know, the ownership from the community on fire hydrants is extremely important. We've seen that recently as this week. I had to write a letter to a, a community member that had overgrowth near the hydrant. I requested that it was cut back. Um, anybody who sees a fire hydrant, if you can't get to it, neither can we, and that slows our process to get in. As I said, this is ownership. 
we don't own the hydrants. What I can tell you about the budget as it was presented to me is that uh, this year we're going to see a budget request from the administration of $494,299, which is a 1.52% increase. And from all that I gather in discussing this, this is a um, 2015 cost plus 5% which is the standard uh, rate that they're charging right now for the increases. Other than that, also, you questions any on questions? <coughs> I have a comment. Okay. Uh, and harking back, for example, to the A Street Fire where two million unmetered gallons were used. So you are getting You're the getting unmetered water Absolutely. from the hydrants for the uh, uh, fire suppression. And they're able to provide it. That should that shouldn't go without say. So that night they they were able to provide that much water yeah. without question, without fail, and everybody else still had water in town. They were still able to do their job there. And no bill. And no bill, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, but when you see that much water, there are many many communities that could not compete with that, and they did a tremendous job for sure. And one of the factors in your ISO rating is the availability of the water. water. I think that's forty percent on your ISO yeah. rating. And so we're very fortunate to have a private water company that does supply our needs for disagree. fire suppression. So I just wanted to point it out. Mr. Bean? No, sir. You know, and Mrs. Wolseley brought up a good point when she said uh, that she would never have thought about the UV light affecting your equipment. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have full faith in our department heads. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great night. He's trying to and tell you not to stand on no, the UV I'm trying light. to tell other. <laughs> I'm trying to tell the people here at the board why we don't want to interfere right. in the department heads, because <clears throat> they know more than we do. He knows how to uh, zip through a budget. God love him. And Chief Sawyer and Deputy Chief Hobbs. Good evening. Good evening. Ho, ho, ho. 14. Page. Uh, page 14. Thank you. There you go. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, just want to take a moment to thank Selectman Wolseley for bringing up the, uh, the tragic death of Officer Pete Cormier of the Northampton Police Department. Uh, we get the call Saturday night. Um, it was not a call that you expect. 46-year-old man on the Seacoast Emergency Response Team, just a very vibrant man, great cop, and uh, it's truly a tragedy. Um, it seems when these tragedies occur, the Hampton Police Department frequently gets tasked with assisting to help that agency through their difficult time. This is the uh, same in this case. Um, Officer Cormier, uh, his wake service will be at Remick's Funeral Home on Lafayette Road here in Hampton at uh, Thursday the 8th. Law enforcement procession will be from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, law enforcement only or law enforcement families are welcome to attend. Uh, we'll be organizing that in the parking lot uh, at Remix. Uh, the public viewing will be at uh, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, uh, and all are encouraged to attend. Even if you didn't know uh, Peter, if you support your local law enforcement, just showing uh, up to you know, show the family that it mattered uh, would be appreciated. We plan on departing Remix on Friday, uh, the 9th. Uh, we're going to be leaving at 11 o'clock, and we'll be heading for St. Mary's Cemetery at Dover Point for a graveside service. I do not have the details yet on which direction we'll be going. We do have a meeting tomorrow uh, with the Chief of Northampton, State Police, and the other assisting agencies uh, to finalize those details. As soon as I know what those details are going to be, I'll certainly notify the board and try to make that public information so people can make alternate travel plans uh, if we're going to impact the traffic flow on a Friday or Thursday. Uh, I do expect a heavy attendance on Thursday and Friday, so if you, you can avoid Route 1 during those time frames, it might be advisable. Yeah, thank you on that. For the budget, uh, we do have a, but we could go to the last page. We have an adjustment uh, conferred with the manager and finance director. The bottom line number of... Uh, Four, I'm sorry. Okay. The requested amount of uh, four million sixty thousand two hundred ninety-four should be reduced by thirty thousand. Oh. And I'll get into detail as to what that is as I move through the budget. 
You'll notice in the budget sheets you received, there's a number of uh, what appear to be dramatic changes, but yet the budget only really reflects the bottom line, about a 1.6, 1.7 change in the overall. Some of those areas that have caused these changes include some changes uh, in the locations where I have some of my staffing. As you remember, I came to the board uh, looking for uh, support for putting an officer on the drug task force due to the issues we've been experiencing in the region, which we've accomplished. He is off now working, uh, I understand, very diligently, very busy uh, throughout the New England area. Uh, based on that, I did not want to leave my detective division short of detectives, so I backfilled that position, even though he's still with the department, temporary duty with another agency, with the DEA. We have a lot of stuff going on here right in town that I, did, I felt that needed the attention, so I did move a position over from patrol into detectives. Did not change the overall number of full-time officers, but it did change some of the line items. You'll see increases in detective wages and a reduction in the officer wages and corresponding with training and all the, uh, the benefits such as the clothing allowance and all that changes proportionally from detective increasing to patrol uh, decreasing based on that change, if that's kind of understandable the way I put it out there. Um, the other changes uh, that you see increased Again, was the uh, radio maintenance, was that issue, was the $30,000. Uh, there was an item in there f uh, that we had put in to improve on our interior sur uh, surveillance system. We're also addressing that uh, at this point through a warrant article. So I feel the most prudent thing to do so we're not in an issue where we may be crossing over is to drop uh, 30000 of that from that line and go with the warrant article. So that's where I'm at with that. Uh, I know it's not always the way we want to deal with priority items, but it's one of those things It's a significant cost to try to go with the system. That number reflected a lease program as opposed to what I'm proposing, which in the Warren article, was, which is a purchase. And we can get into detailed discussion on that if you, if you need. Uh, the other area we've experienced an increase, like I think the other departments, is the electric. Uh, that's up 11 percent in that area. And I think that really accounts for most of that 1.6 is those items. If there are any other detailed questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. Mr. Wardell. Thank you. Yeah, I had a couple. Um, let me just try and find more room. Under like, like uh, vacation wages was a 33% increase. Which, uh, which one, sir? Uh, da, 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 uh, 42103. Oops. Vacation wages. Okay. Uh, okay. 18. What I did was go out and do a cost analysis, uh, a little bit on the usage and obviously the adjustments to wages. The wages usually don't go down, they go up. Uh, and that's, I believe, a reflection of that. Okay. And the use rates. All right. And the uh, training and recruitment, 100% up. That was on 42.103 again. That is a result of, as you remember, we went to um, a warrant article last year to do that second class. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those costs for that group of officers uh, that graduated the uh, 269th part-time academy are totally borne from that warrant article, including recruitment costs. My plan for next year is we are currently, as we speak, doing interviews all this week for next year's class. Most of the training they'll receive and issues associated with will go into next year. I also plan on running a second class. Um, as you know, the police academy has canceled the summer class. They're not going to run that again. Um, but we have a fall class. So what we're going to attempt to do is do some recruiting in the spring, testing, and get them ready for that fall class, which will be born in that budget. So we're going to be doing a double class, but it spans over uh, two years. That's the problem with the uh, 
we don't have a fiscal budget. We, we're on a calendar budget, and most of the stuff that the state does kind of goes fiscally mm -hmm. the way they work. So it just doesn't match up. But instead of having a Warren article, you're seeing the cost of a second class reflected in a couple line numbers here. And is it appropriate now to talk about that radio maintenance? You said to ask a question on that, or is that to come up later? Anybody? As we began the budget process, we, we know we have a critical need um, in the PD. That, that's our security surveillance system. The, the primary is that we just have to have our upbooking area. Those are the areas where people try to sue you, they claim things happen, and we want to be able to defend ourselves. Or in the event one of our officers acts inappropriately, to be able to deal with that. Um, as we move forward, we looked at a lease program, and those were numbers that we looked at last year. But as you remember, as we went through the budget process, that got cut. As we move forward, the system is failing. Uh, we're really down to shutting down DVRs and other other areas that I feel are critical, <coughs> and moving them just for the booking room because that is our most critical. Um, so that number reflected that as a replacement of the cameras only but what we're seeing is the dvrs and the whole system it, it's over 10 years old now it's outdated our ability to have somebody come in and actually service that system uh they just don't they're not servicing that type of, that type of technology anymore so I, I just feel that the best move for the department right now even though it's a little bit more expensive is to go to the warren article and purchase a complete system the thirty-three thousand represented a lease program that would have to occur each year so in three years, you would exceed the cost <coughs> of the purchase. Sometimes leases are good, but not always. I know some people think that leases take away a lot of your problems, um, and they do in some issues. You see some of that going on with vehicle fleets of a larger size. Uh, but I think in this particular instance, the best move for us is the purchase. And, and without that secure, I mean, you're leaving yourself wide open for lawsuits and everything else, like you said. Well, I was asked the other day, you know, I have five warrant articles going up before the voters, uh, hopefully. Um, and which one, if I could only pick one, what would it be? It would be that. Um, that is just a facility such as the Hampton Police Department and the number of folks that we um, process, uh, it, it's just critical. I would have to first move, if, if that were to fail, um, I would have to prohibit other agencies from utilizing our facilities simply because of the, the inherent liability we have. The liability we have our own arrests, uh, and no way to protect ourselves against those claims, I'd have to restrict the facility to strictly Hampton PD, and that's difficult because we work with a lot of other agencies, um, and we, we count on them and they count on us, uh, but I would have to restrict that, and I, I don't want to get to that point. So um, that Warren article um, is critical. It, it, we have to have it. it. It's just one of those things, and I, I hate having to put it on a Warren article, but the goal this year was to come in as close to last year's budget, and there's no way throwing that money into the budget would have worked. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's a good answer. Mr. Bridal. With, with vehicle maintenance, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, you guys have gone now more towards the SUV type yes. cruisers instead of the Crown Vicks, which yep. they don't make anymore. They don't make anymore. Uh, how, are we, how are they holding up? Um, I'd say pretty well. They're definitely um, when Ford announced that they weren't going to make the Crown Vix anymore, it was a difficult uh, thing because the cars getting, keep getting smaller, but the cops don't. Um, it's just, you know, we have some very physically athletic people, and a lot of them are bigger, and, and they need that room. And add on top of that the equipment they carry, and also add on we're probably busier than your average New Hampshire police department when it comes to arrests and transporting people. And I was... I was in fear that we would have to go to a system of smaller cruisers and then having somebody in the transport wagon all the time, which I don't feel is an efficient use, but if that's what we had to do, we considered it. But um, Deputy Chief Hobbs at the time uh, with a group of our driving instructors went out and field tested the vehicles that were coming out that people are offering to replace it. This is the one we uh, decided to go with, um, and most of the Seacoast you'll see is driving those um, SUVs because they're very utility with get the equipment in the back, room to transport a prisoner, and enough room for the electronics that we carry these days because usually you have a, a radar system, mobile data terminal, and other associated gear that has to have, you know, the stable, stable platform to handle all of that, and this vehicle has proven pretty well for us. That better, wouldn't that you say it better in two in inclement weather? Oh, absolutely. I mean, nothing against the, the Crown Vic was a great, uh, great vehicle, but in the snow it was a nightmare. Uh, and in the 
the weather we experience here in New England, um, it's much more user-friendly in that type of weather. And honestly, with some of the vehicles, they have come up with the big engines, and they're fast and they're fancy. Um, we're really not worried that much about going fast. We're worried about getting where we're going safely. We can't help you if we can't get there. Absolutely. Um, and in those road conditions that we experience around here with the ice, it's definitely a good vehicle. I think we made the, made the right choice. Now that summer's over, how's your recruitment and retainment? <laughs> um, it is going to be, at least for the rest of my career, the biggest um, obstacle mm -hmm. to operations. It's just very difficult right now. Nationally, if you look around, recruitment for police agencies is down. Um, it, it's tough. It's just not a very popular job right now. Um, there's just a, a lot of violence directed towards police for a variety of reasons. Um, and people just aren't showing up uh, like they used to to test. Now, we were very happy. We conducted our test on Saturday, and we actually have 27 interviews this week. That's up uh, a little bit from the last couple of years, which is... My target goal is 15 officers either through one academy or two next year to get that number going because as we speak today, we have 35 part-time officers on our roster. Now, that also includes seven new officers that came on uh, from the summer academy that we didn't intend to use, but we brought them on as traffic control officers this <coughs> summer as we were so short-handed to work on the HBAC program and also... Uh, on the Seafood Fest and all these other associated events we run that require a lot of officers for traffic control. Mm -hmm. So at the end of August when they uh, graduated, we put together a quick uh, training course. Uh, Tom Goditis in the training corps really did a great job. They gave them some of the training they would have gotten next year, particularly in the area of traffic control, so we could utilize those officers. But that said, uh, I'm expecting uh, the attrition rate that we experience usually. We're going to lose a few of the new people to departments. We lost two right after the 4th of July to other departments. Uh, I've also, we've done some informal polling of some of the veteran officers, um, and there's a number of them are getting older, and it's getting more difficult for them to make the commitment that I anticipate we're going to lose a number of them this year too. So um, I'm looking at, before we hire any new people, that that current roster could be down in the area of 25 if we don't backfill with some new people. So we're really pushing hard to... Uh, do some recruitment. We had a couple of officers up at one of the local college CJ programs for a job fair. Uh, was it uh, St. Anselm's we went oh, up to? Merrimack College. Merrimack College, I'm sorry. Went down to Merrimack College, and we, they gave us a room just for us and sent two officers down. We have a little uh, recruitment video and just explaining how it works. And uh, just, you know, we're, we're trying. It's just it's one of these times I talked to the colonel from the state police. I talked to other agencies, Northampton PD. They were running a, uh, a, a, a PT test on Sunday. We're all in the same boat. It's just tough. And when people are offering full-time jobs, we're looking for part-time. It's a little bit of a harder sell. Uh, we're still getting good people, um, but it's just a little bit harder. And Manchester and Nashville keep stealing them from us, so I don't know what we can do about that. But uh, I wish there was an answer, but it is, we're just going to keep plugging away. Mm. Well, something you're going to have to, as you said, you're probably going to struggle with the whole, your whole career. I would anticipate that. I don't see it, I don't see a change in that uh, situation for at least the next four or five years. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Mrs. Wolseley. <coughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Um, the SUVs, I love them. And the manager was kind enough to allow me to be transported in one last year during one of those awful storms. Mm -hmm. But it was a great opportunity to see how it worked, and I was really impressed. I'm excited about those. Well, I, I think one of the things, uh, you know, Chief Sullivan at the time, um, big believer in getting buy-in from the, from the troops. Mm -hmm. We sent these guys out. We got three or four different models of vehicles. We tested them, and then when it came time to how we were going to, you know, scheme them up, we had the old traditional green, but yeah. times change, and sometimes a little change like that helps morale, and we let them pick out the kind of the scheme, and uh, we've gotten rave reviews about our black and whites being really sharp looking compared to some of the other towns. So. And the officer who transported me was very nice and didn't put me in jail. <laughs> really, I, I'm, I've turned into a big fan of those SUVs. I, I like that. I like to see them. Tuition reimbursement on page 14. Are you using that every year? What kind of a call do you have for the tuition reimbursement? We, we use the tuition reimbursement. If, I just want to make sure I'm on the same 
I mean, I can remember a yeah. former chief getting his law degree for some tuition reimbursement. That's capped at eight thousand dollars. It, it's right. we use it as as people per, come. Per per no, no not per for person, the department as a whole. Thing. It's okay. eight thousand yeah. dollars. When we run out of money, we run out of money. So okay. we, we you know we encourage the folks to go to school. Uh, they have to be pre-approved for the classes they intend to put in for, Good. and they have to be law enforcement related, and I believe they have to get a C or better. Uh, but that's town policy, not contractual. And we routinely, as I understand, we, we use that money. I don't believe we had any money left over from last year. Okay, so you're pretty. It's pretty much an ongoing um, educational opportunity. Yes. Okay, that's good. Page 15. Um, gasoline, 1,100 gallons, 330. Are you in the same position as Chief Ayotte? Um, we use the state, the state. We use the state bid, so we don't get the okay. we don't get the spikes. We don't get the dips. It's okay. it's more consistent. So that's pretty much on target yeah. for this year. Okay, and you've addressed the training and recruitment at the bottom of that page. So you will you will end up with basically two sessions worth. That the bottom of that page is a different training and recruitment. Okay. That one is the career development costs reflects tuition costs for specialized school seminars that are scheduled throughout the year. Okay, I'm in the wrong yeah. section. This okay. is uh, one. Point eight one zero zero that I'm looking at on page so bottom when you of page went to the FBI Academy. That's if the when the deputy goes to the FBI Academy, the costs of a lot of that will, will be come out from that. Um, we we also host things like the FBI. We just have the FBI leadership group in. Oh. We host all of their classes, so we don't have to travel. Um, we don't Good. have to do lodging. We don't have to do meal reimbursement because they're in town. That what we do have to do is there's certain things we have to have like providing coffee and water mm -hmm. and. Uh, like muffins and stuff in the morning for that. Significantly less cost by having them in our training room compared to, say, sending them to Maine or Connecticut. Um, we had people this year from as far away as California to attend wow. that class. Excellent. Okay, page 16 up at the top. I like very much the way you have broken out the different positions and the costs. Also, the number, you know, two detectives, 12 year step, et cetera, so many detectives at four year step. I think that gives me a, a, a much better picture. There's a downside to that. You're going to have to buy me new glasses after all the time looking at that <laughs> Excel spreadsheet. But <laughs> I tried to drill it down. Just moving forward, understand this is the first budget that I put together by my, uh, on my own. Yeah. So one of those things, I'm just a curious person. I start looking. Uh, the chief, Chief Sullivan, did a great, did me a great duty by leaving me the spreadsheets that he used. <laughs> I just tried to expand them so I could better understand how the numbers came together. I love so the way you did that. Time. Chief Ayotte did that as well, and it gives me a better picture of the department. I yep. really appreciated that insight. Um, page 17. Something new in the police department. You have a farrier ferrying horses over the Taylor River or whatever? Uh, is that a spell check? Yeah. You get me with a spell check yeah, at, at a budget am. meeting. So <laughs> uh, I'm sure you have a nice farrier doing the doing the shoot. Can we approve a spelling change? It's all in it's all in, in the vowel, you see. But that did break me up. I have to confess when I when I saw that. Seventeen. Seventeen, okay. Yeah. Eighty two hundred. Eighty two hundred? Yeah. Yeah, but there's still a little spell check in there. Um, under traffic control and patrol, once again, I, I really appreciate the breakdown. The lieutenants, sergeants, patrolmen, whatever step, I, I think that gives us a much, much better picture of the department. Um, page 19, the motorcycle leases for the Road Kings. You're still doing two-year leases? I believe we're up to my recollection is two year lease. I think we, we I think we're doing the we do two and sometimes they'll ask me if I'll continue for the third, which I don't object to because here's why we don't put a lot of miles on the right. bikes. And, and they're the other thing, used by you. Yeah. When we stripe up the bikes yeah. to put you know, the Hampton PDOs, right. That's expensive. So if I can if I have a bike that's in good shape at two years and they want me to take it for a third, it's beneficial to us to keep okay. it. Okay. So generally two years generally but if you have Howie Davidson does a two year lease, but yeah. they open it up sometimes because they know we don't want to spend the money on the striping. Yeah. Those are nice bikes. Okay. And once again the gasoline, uh, thirty thousand gallons at three thirty, but that's the state bid price. Correct. Okay, good. Um Now here's now the training and recruitment over here on page 20. Yep. Um, tuition costs for the specialized schools. So that's the same concept 
as we touched on earlier. Just different schools are for different members of I'm the sorry, department. I'm sorry, ma'am. You're talking training and recruitment, but now you're talking specialized schools. Which one are we well, it, looking at? Well, training and recruitment, I thought earlier here. Oh, tuition costs for specialized schools on page 15. And this says specialized schools and seminars that are scheduled throughout the year. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so are you I'm talking about not 3920? Yeah, well, yes, page but, 20 uh, yep. at the top of the page. 3920, yeah. The cost to provide training seminars, a lot of that has to do with um, our use of force folks that train okay. with the firearms and the So it's batons. a little different. Yeah, absolutely different. Training type, okay. Um, on page 21, the firearms training, the overtime wages, do you anticipate adding more training hours in the department? When I can. Uh, it's a battle of, it's our insurance policy. And okay. I think anybody would tell you <laughs> in the state of New Hampshire, yeah. the Hampton yeah. Police Department's firearms training is probably the best in the state. Yeah. That's why the police academy frequently calls for our instructors to come up yeah. and instruct at the academy. Yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, somebody won't look at me. Do you have to have excellent? Can't you do adequate? Yeah. No, no, I won't. I won't. I will never settle for adequate when it comes to things that could potentially take somebody's life. Our firearms training yeah. is a great program. Um, it's just one of those things because of the bit of a revolving door we're having at the bottom with the special officers. Yeah. We spend a lot of money to get them proficient, and then they're gone within a summer or two, and then we got to do it all over again. And some people take more work. Well, as a selectman who sat in the sand pits in Brentwood mm -hmm. in the late 70s to get the first training program in the department with Bar Vic Strawbridge down from Dover. I remember Vic. Yeah. And uh, you've come a long way, but I'm really proud of having that firearms range in Hampton. Uh, we walked the uh, Elaine and Richard streets with uh, other uh, officials in Hampton trying to tell the neighbors how, what, a, what a nice thing it would be for them, and don't freak out about the firing. We, we get some complaints occasionally. The people are very reasonable with the complaints. Yeah. They understand that we have to do this training, and we try to announce it as best we can. Yeah. The biggest complaint we get is sometimes in the summertime, you know, we don't start shooting before 9 o'clock, yeah. but kids on summer vacation, sometimes they sleep a little later, and it does wake them up. I understand that. I, I don't live that far from the range myself. I hear it going off. But... Uh, it's one of those things, it's a cost of doing business, and everybody's been pretty supportive. Yeah. I'm hoping in the next year or two we can uh, move forward, do some improvements, and maybe baffle some of the noise yes. away from the neighborhood. It just, yeah. with the goal this year of coming in as close to the budget as we could, and I wanted to limit the number of Warren articles I was putting out there, I didn't put anything together this year. And I know some people are hoping I would. I will get to it, but I just didn't think it was the prudent thing to do with the voters this year. So we walked household to household in that neighborhood, pushing it, and I'm really proud of having that there. And now, radio maintenance on 22. So this, the number this you is see different from the Warren article that you're proposing? I think there would be pro possibility of some crossover with that, and I just don't want any confusion on that. So I this just want to strike the 33 from the CCTV camera replacement right. and change the radio supplies to, six, to reflect 6,250. So we're minusing 30000 from the uh, radio maintenance line. And this is probably a stupid question, but I'm assuming you have the cameras in the Sally Port. We have them. It's not so much having the cameras. It's what's being recorded and what's not. What's failing is the recording system, the digital video recorders. Oh. They're 10 years old, and it's technology that's it's still like anything. with a, You buy a computer, and three years later, it's obsolete. It's designed obsolescence, we call it. Because to me, um, that's kind of a critical area. It is a huge to... area. The booking, yeah. the booking room, the sally port as you come in, yeah. and it's just, I, I can't emphasize enough, we have to get that Warren article passed. Yes. It, it's the most critical one we have. Okay. And I, I, I really am, I didn't go through it as fast as you did, but I just got a little bit more, page 23 at the top. And then, now you are confirming here that you're going to have a double class of special recruits. In 2016. In the, yep. And the way that's going to work is right now we are in our testing process. Mm -hmm. That process gets us all the way up to December. They won't start the special academy up in Concord because we no longer host it in Hampton. They had to cut that because of the state budget Maybe issues. You said that. Yep. They'll be going up to Concord in probably February, late January or February, to start that class. They'll come back out to us, train, train with us, and be ready to go for the summer of 16. 
What I also plan to do is run another testing process sometime in March to get ready for the fall academy, which is the end of September, October. So that's what that additional cautioning of a double class. Good. We probably won't see those folks <clears throat> until 17, but it's just one of those things because of the way we're budgeted compared to the way they operate. Mm -hmm. We split the operating costs of putting people on usually between two budgets, just the way it happens. You gentlemen have done a beautiful job, and Deputy Hobbs is going to smile before he leaves here tonight. I know he is. No, I told him he's not allowed to smile at these things. <laughs> we're very serious. <laughs> Mr. Bean. Great job, gentlemen. Appreciate it very much. I have no questions. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> would you like to do uh, the animal control budget for us? Yes. Or what yes. we like to call the, the peat repeat budget? <laughs> peat. That's good. Uh, just a, a note on that. I don't know if you folks heard. Um, Pete is out, convalescing from some injuries. Oh. Uh, he took a little fall down the stairs at home, uh, so oh. he got dinged up pretty good. So Nobody bit him. No, no. I mean, uh, uh, we don't worry about Pete getting bit. We worry about what's going to happen to the dog that bites him. So um, oh. it wasn't a work-related thing. He was at home. That was um, bad. But just uh, best wishes to him and a quick recovery. <clears throat> he does uh, a great job with us. and He's a sweetheart. Takes so. a lot of problems yeah. off, off of people's hands yeah. that they don't want to deal with. Page 47. Yep. Yeah, um, the only thing I think you're really going to see a, a huge change, I think we see the supplies and expenses. Mm -hmm. I think most of that has a lot to do with um, with a new vehicle and dealing with that and yes. getting equipment up to date. We're trying to get him set up so he has the proper equipment. He was in that beat-up old truck, and some of the stuff he had was kind of nasty, and we just felt it was time to start upgrading the equipment. So that's really what that reflects. I mean, we had a big dog in our yard, and when Peter pulled in, I mean, we had to sit the dog in the front passenger seat because the dog was really too big to go in the back of the No, Pete's an amazing guy. Some of the problems he's dealt with over the years, and uh, I even got emailed from some folks I went to the National Academy with about the, yeah. if you remember the picture of the, uh, the animal trying to come through the door at somebody's house. Pete dealing with that one that made national news, yeah. believe it or not. Um, yeah. And that's Pete. He's just always there. And and, and, the, and a wonderful, compassionate person too. So he deals I, with some I, tough I, situations with people with their animals because it can be hard him. on people. So nice budget. Thank you. And I think the last one, uh, Mr. Chairman, is I have the emergency management. Uh, so how much yes. on it's a thousand dollars. We absorb a lot of the stuff we do either through state funding. Uh, that I'm really getting is emergency <coughs> management really getting in tune with. I think I probably spend more time on with my uh, emergency management rep than I do anybody else during the week. Um, <coughs> but they're great. They're, they're getting me up to speed on things. I, I believe um, I'll be coming to you probably within the next couple of weeks to ask for the appointment of Chief Ayod as my deputy. And we're going to be scheduling out some of the uh, emergency management training down at the National okay. Fire Academy okay. uh, and some of the other stuff that we do regionally. I think it's important for us where we experience so much with the crowds we deal with but our, our environment that we deal with, the climate, uh, we're constantly be, uh, dealing with problems. As you saw, we had the, some pretty high tides over the last, uh, over the weekend, and we had some events going on, and people were really, really worried about how we were going to handle those, but we were prepared. So, but if there's no questions on that, it's $1,000, and that's been, yeah. I think, pretty consistent for a number of years. Okay, any um, questions on either budget? Yeah. Mr. Bridal? Oh. Mr. Bean? Negative, sir. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, and everything seems to be going great. It does, and I do have my um, quarterly report I was scheduled for, if you have mm -hmm. time. Perfect. Okay, and I'll just read this And you're to thanking you. your lucky stars you don't live in South Carolina. Oh, with something like that, yeah. I mean, we've had our battles with the weather, too, so they don't get the snow, so I don't hear anybody from Carolina calling and worrying about me in the snow, so. Um, Full-time staffing, we remain at 34. Uh, Officer Tim Hamlin and Officer <coughs> Sorokins uh, served as our corporals over the uh, the last quarter. They did a great job leading our part-time officers, and it's getting more and more difficult because many of the faces are new every year, probationary, and it's tough to get them up to speed in such an operation as we have. Uh, we do have one officer currently out of service due to a duty-related injury. Um, and the prognosis on that one is a little dubious. We're still waiting to hear, but he, he has some significant injuries, a little more serious than we had first heard. It was the officer that got dragged by the car during an arrest. 
Um, so we're hopeful that he can come back, but uh, right now the medical reports are, are a little up in the air, so hopefully we can get him back. Uh, Part-time staffing, 34, 35 sworn. Uh, we began the season with 31 working part-time officers. Uh, shortly after the holiday, we received the resignation from two officers, bringing our number to working officers to 29. Summer part-time academy was also being conducted uh, regionally through video conferencing with Hampton PD being the Seacoast host. We had seven officers graduate from the 269th New Hampshire Part-Time Academy. This class was not scheduled to come to work for the department until 2016, but due to the uh, issues I mentioned to you, uh, we brought them on at the end of the summer to help us with the traffic control issues that we were experiencing. Uh, our activity rates were up in a lot of categories compared to the same quarter last year. Now, this quarter began July 1 and ended September 30th. Uh, calls for service are up 11%. Yes. Arrests were up 9%. DWIs went down, which was good because we had a bad trend there the, uh, the second quarter. They were significantly up. Drug offenses are down 35%, which was good. Incidents reported up 9%. Total offenses are up 7%. Felonies are up 6%. Motor vehicle stops are up 16.5%, uh, which is good. The guys, we, we have fewer guys, but they're out really stopping the vehicles. Parking tickets down, I should reflect, I said down, it's, uh, you're going to like this number, it's up 45%. Um, accidents up 11%. Uh, the parking tickets were directly a result of our parking enforcement efforts through the, the officers, but also we were only able to bring the supervisor on, but he's a very diligent, hardworking man, um, and he was out there every day um, really hitting it. I can only imagine what we'll be able to do when we hire two or three more next year. That is the game plan to bring on uh, two or three more folks uh, doing the parking enforcement on those peak periods. Operationally, uh, obviously a very busy summer with everything we had going on. Uh, a lot of challenges, staffing levels, ongoing overdose crisis, the level of contacts the department was experiencing of intoxicated individuals. That's still one of the big problems we have is the overserving in our in our establishments. Uh, we're trying to work with them. Uh, we brought in a uh, member from the New Hampshire Liquor Enforcement Bureau. We gave him a, a desk and an office in the building so he would work directly. I happened to walk in the other day, and there he was doing his reports from other communities sitting in Hampton. So it's good to have them there to, to, to get people to understand it's not just us out there arresting people, but it's the administrative function that these folks uh, support us with is critical to, to keep things to a, a reasonable level here in Hampton. Um, Fourth of July, we were very prepared for the busy weekend. Overall activity was up significantly. We doubled the arrests being made compared to 2014. Majority of the arrests made on the Fourth of July were alcohol related. Yeah. Uh, prediction of good weather for the holiday, great emphasis was placed on traffic control. Uh, this paid great dividends as we were able to keep the traffic exiting the beach area after the fireworks display moving and quickly uh, relieve the heavy traffic and put it back to its normal flow. Lieutenant Gidley. Lieutenant Kaditis, Corporal Hamlin, Corporal Sorokins are commended for the tireless efforts preparing and executing the department's operational plan for the holiday, which included the whole weekend. I'd also like to thank the New Hampshire State Police, Rockingham County Sheriff's Department, and the University of New Hampshire Police Department for their support during the holiday. Uh, as you remember, we entered into a mutual aid agreement with the University of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. They come down to our busy periods in the summer, which is their quiet time, and we reciprocate. We had officers up at their homecoming. Uh, and it, it seems to be working well for us. Um, in July, we entered into a, a collaborative effort with the Hampton Beach Area Commission to find remedies for traffic congestion in the beach area during peak times of the week. And if I could, I'd just write the read you the letter I sent to the commission uh, with our results or sense of uh, how, it, how it went. And this was addressed to John Nyan, Chairman, Hampton Beach Area Commission. In July, the Hampton Police Department entered into a collaborative effort with the HBAC to find remedies traffic congestion in the beach area during peak times of the week. This effort was based upon the observations of public safety and the business community. During our discussions, we discovered differing views of a common problem. We were able to identify critical areas that address the varying concerns of those vested in improving, tra improving traffic flow along Ocean Boulevard. By agreement with the HBAC, the department agreed to provide officers at specific traffic posts during peak periods. We identified the traffic posts to be at four crosswalks on Ocean Boulevard from G Street to D Street. The peak periods were identified as being during the early evening hours of Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. 
This program began on Wednesday, August 5th, 2015, with a start of the department's 6 p.m. shift. Four officers were assigned that evening, and the department was immediately met with compliments on its effectiveness. As we move forward with the program, it became increasingly difficult to staff the program due to our already critically low staffing levels in the part-time officer ranks. The department's training unit, under the direction of Lieutenant Tom Goditis, quickly developed the solution. The department recently graduated seven new officers from the New Hampshire Police Academy who were not due to come <coughs> to duty to the department until 2016 season after receiving departmental initial training. The training unit developed an accelerated training regiment that would prepare those new officers to work in traffic control capacity. This summer, specifically, the traffic control, tro uh, excuse me, traffic control program, we began with the HBAC. In the addition of these officers to work in the traffic control capacity, the department was able to continue the program through the end of the 2015 summer season. The entire program was met with positive feedback from the community, and based upon its success, it is my intention, budget, and staff permitting to continue this program going into the 2016 summer season. In the near future, I will provide you with the HPD cost for participating in this program this summer. All too often, people will identify a problem but are willing to participate, uh, participate in efforts to a solution. I want to thank you as chairman and the other commissioners for your generous donation of $4,000 to the town of Hampton to help offset the cost of this program. The HBAC's continued proactive approach and willingness to participate in problem solving and improving the Hampton Beach experience for all of us is to be commended. Very nice. Um, we, we did receive a lot of compliments. It's a lot of people that remember when we, we did those things and were able to staff things like that. Uh, really liked it. Um, you know, it comes at a price, though. It, it takes away from other areas. So our recruiting efforts are very critical this year to get people uh, so we can continue that. It, I think it gives an overall sense of, of safety and the fact that the traffic keeps moving because we stop the pedestrians from going out into the roadway. I do have the... Uh, state analysis package if anybody wants that I can leave that here for you to assess on your own the sites it, it, it's pretty encompassing statistically and I'd, I'd bore you to tears with it if I went over it tonight mm -hmm. but I can leave that here with you for you folks to peruse but <coughs> kind of gives you uh, an outline of what we do going on to state properties mm -hmm. and the type of calls we're getting yeah yeah I'd like to take questions Mr. Wardell <laughs> yeah uh, good report and it's really nice to see you said DWIs are down and drugs yes um, we did have, um, we did experience, um, we started out the season tough. We were at uh, five overdose deaths in this community uh, prior to July 1, and that's one ahead of last year. We did experience one more in July, so that puts put to six overdoses this year, but it seems to have slowed. Um, other communities are experiencing the same thing, although we did have some stuff up in Ryan Portsmouth. Overall, it, it's slowing down a little on the seacoast. What that means, we're not sure what the trend is, because sometimes you see the summer, it just changes everything up, and we see more of the people that are prone to these things setting up shop. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I get worried when we go into the holiday season, to be honest with you, because we do get some people that, for some reason, that is a, an area where we see a spike in, in uh, drinking, suicides, mm -hmm. uh, and drug, uh, drug issues. So hopefully the word's getting out through the education and the enforcement actions. That, that this is just a, a, a critical issue, and we've got to we've got to deal with it. And we, you said you're still seeing the problem with overserving. It, it, that's an ongoing issue. Um, it, it is a destination community now. When you look at the crowds that come in, you know we talk about the old days when traffic was coming over the bridge at one o'clock in the morning on a Friday. We don't see that anymore. Um, we, I think what you're seeing is more people are staying there because of the improved accommodations that we're experiencing down there with the condos and people are improving their properties. Mm. So while we're not getting the, the vehicle traffic, what we are experiencing is when people come out of the bars, um, you know, they're, they're the walking wounded. They are, they got a snootful and, and it's a problem. Just because you're not driving doesn't make it a problem. We experienced, you know, somebody that got, we almost lost somebody, a local person got hit. Um, you know, and there's al you know, alcohol is involved in all of those things down there. I'm just, I'm very concerned that we need to do more with our business people down there to be more proactive, particularly with the people that are doing the serving, that they have to take this serious, that we're going to come down on them. Uh, we don't want to be an obstruction to good business where we want to work with the business community. But when people are just unable to function walking down the sidewalk, can't even walk on the sidewalk, we got a problem and we need to address it. 
Um, one of the things we are going to be doing is coming into next season, uh, we are going to co-host a uh, hospitality meeting at the PD with uh, New Hampshire Liquor Enforcement. And with us, we can plan on continuing the program of having a liquor enforcement uh, officer agent assigned working out of our PD with full access and just continue that program because I feel it's going to make a difference. If we come at them from, you know, the enforcement out there, arresting DWIs, dealing with people, taking protective custody that are too drunk to walk down the street, and we, we refer all our reports to Liquor Enforcement Bureau for follow-up action, um, and they're, they're very good to work with, and they go in and they start asking the hard questions. What training did you have? Why did this happen? We want to see your videotape, and most of the places have video now, and they they have to provide it to us. Right. So, and the uh, the traffic the, down the beach area, the control a couple of times when I was down there during those times, boy, they, they really was doing a good job. Yeah, we're going to try to expand That's that a little really too. A good job. Um, we used a couple of years ago. We took the initiative and we started using the crowd control fence in certain key areas. My plan is to purchase more of that fence with either with surplus funds or wherever I can get people to get, you know, donate the money for it. It's really not that expensive and use it to our best uh, efforts because it relieves officers from having to do that function. Um, I had a recent visit uh, to Nashville, Tennessee a couple of weeks ago, and uh, their main drag down there is just, I, I called it Hampton Beach on steroids because they're not just one side of bars, it was on both sides. They have 174 bars in a four block area. Um, but they have very few pedestrian problems. And I had a chance to meet some of the officers from Nashville and they explained, you know, it's basically, they use the same fence we use. They just decorate it nice with these nice uh, ventilated sleeves that have advertisement on it, welcome to Nashville. Um, and they look, they look eye-pleasing. Sometimes those things can look a little nasty, they get rusty, but you can dress <coughs> them up and they look good. But it forces people to use the crosswalks. Um, it puts them into the crosswalk. They got no other option now. It's both sides of the road. I don't think we could probably do that in a lot of areas. But I'm thinking from you know south of the casino, north up to A Street. If we covered that area on on the west side of the road with a fence for possibly the season, or deploy it on weekends. You know, I'm willing to. I know there might be some business folks with some concerns, but in the past, those people that had expressed those concerns and now seem to be in favor of it. Um, it keeps the business. It keeps the people there. Um, and it's just a lot safer for us and there's fewer officers that have to manage the crowds in the street and it helps the traffic so yeah. I'm exploring that and I would take any feedback from anybody in the community or from the board on what their thoughts on that were but that's my intention to move forward with that <coughs> Mr. Brattle no I think uh, you guys did a, a very good job this summer I think uh, okay. as your you. first fill Full season in charge. I think it's been. Uh, yeah, but I wasn't worried about it, Rusty. I was fine. Uh, yeah, you were doing a good <laughs> job. This summer, at, at some point, it appeared that there was some like community policing going on up in the uptown district. We had some um, police officers up there and walking around. Is that something you're going to look at further? Is Absolutely. That Everything you know. I try to listen to the different. You know, as much as this is one town, you do have to recognize <clears> there are distinct concerns in different areas. And I've heard from the business folks uptown. Uh, I know Mary Louise, we've spoken a number of times about we used to have an officer up in the square during mm -hmm. different times. So we tried doing that to the best of our ability with the staffing we had. Um, we didn't get any additional funds for it, but it, I just felt that it was with enough concern being expressed um, to try it. Um, we didn't lose anything from it. Uh, you know, it's just an officer that was on foot. He, you know, we stayed within a two block area of where he. He parked the cruiser, so if he had a call, he could get to it. When I had the availability, I'd add an extra person just to cover that. Um, and it seemed that we, again, that was another one of those things that we got a lot of positive feedback on. So it, it, staffing and, fi and funding, I intend to do it. Well, thank you. I, I know um, I had a couple people that mentioned it, and, and we're appreciative of that, that point. Uh, so other than that, excellent job. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Walsley. People uptown do tend to feel a little neglected, but given the stress that you have and the staffing that you have, you know, we understand, but sometimes we whine. Well, not now that I'm not a beach guy and I live uptown with the, you know, <laughs> I probably understand it better. Mr. Bean. No questions, sir. Thank you for your report. Sounds like everything's really going well. We're pretty pleased. We hope we can keep keep it going. <laughs> what about with the seafood festival? How did that all? Um, seafood festival was good. We, you know, obviously last year we had some concerns and um, we expressed them, and we had some very frank discussions, um, and they took a lot of the suggestions. So we kind of saw a different 
attitude from some of the uh, folks that were causing our problems. The, uh, the over-serving of alcohol was a primary concern at the beer tents. So a much better management of that situation. Um, I had made a recommendation. You know, an event like that really counts on volunteers, um, but it also helps if you get volunteers that it might be in the particular business you're trying to control. Um, and I had made some suggestions to reach out to some of the, the local uh, establishments that have good reputations with their staff and handling crowds and people that have been drinking. And uh, the suggestion was taken. I, I felt there was a noticeable difference. Our arrests were down. The rowdy behavior was down. Um, and I think people just had a much more enjoyable event. So d did you come up with any new thoughts for next year? or We're going to continue. Uh, we did take the initiative this year to bring in um, the 12th civil support team from the uh, New Hampshire National Guard uh, as a precautionary measure. You see some of these larger events. We're bringing in support teams to try to prevent and also detect people that may try to do some harm in an event like that. And uh, we got a lot of questions about uh, we got a number of calls at the uh, PD of the people saw these little boxes on the side of the road with the lights in them. And they were atmospheric uh, detectors that can rapidly detect somebody trying to bring something in that could be harmful. Uh, we had them set up in a location uh, in proximity to the event, monitoring the, uh, I, won't, yeah, I don't want to give too many uh, of the issues that we did, but they're monitoring to see if there's anything that triggers that. Um, they bring in uh, different packages of security. They can bring in more surveillance for us uh, with cameras and more interoperability with other agencies. God forbid that we had something tragic happen, either natural disaster or otherwise. Having them there on the ground with us, working with us, uh, was important. We also brought in some of the state assets with EOD just to be around in the vicinity. So if the event uh, wasn't so much worried about a, a somebody doing something, it was more, what do you do these days if somebody leaves a backpack? Mm. and nobody knows who had it. When you look at what that can cause to an event as we try to clear that and make sure it's okay, it, it can be difficult, and we're generally going to have to wait for somebody to come down from Concord that has the expertise to deal with that. We had them on site to deal with those issues if they occurred. Um, fortunately, nothing like that happened, and I think the fact that people know that we take a lot of precautions to deal with these issues would deter anybody from coming to Hampton to try to cause any harm. I think uh, the number of officers we have manning the different areas um, is sufficient to provide for security. The traffic control is obviously an issue. But I just think the general way we handle ourselves in any of these events, we've gained a great reputation in the manner we conduct events. Um, I'd highlight when they were looking for a new place to run the Pumpkin Festival, editorial uh, ran that they should bring it to Hampton because the Hampton Police Department knows how to run an event. Uh, paraphrasing, but um, so we took great pride in that. Uh, I think we do a good job with our planning. Uh, we just wrapped up our last major event of what I call the event season from Seafood Fest out to Columbus Day. We have a lot of those events. We had the uh, the half marathon and uh, went pretty smoothly. I know there were some people inconvenienced, and I don't mean to minimize their concerns, but from a public safety standpoint, those things have gone <coughs> pretty well in this town. We, I think we do a pretty good job as a team coordinating with fire, um, public works, and making these things work for the town. Well done. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in this evening. Appreciate you having us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Moving on to old business. Number one, board determination on recreation and public works budgets. I'm going to ask Christy to come up here because she has more data and information Thank than probably much. IBM ever thought of putting in a, in a computer. <laughs> The question we had for the board was uh, you reviewed uh, some time ago the, um, the budgets for the Recreation Department and the Public Works Departments. And are you ready uh, to take an action to approve, modify, disapprove, uh, whatever it is you're going to do with those particular budgets so that we can start setting up the budget books? And the same for all the rest of the budgets that you've gone through up here. You're ready to take an action with regards to those budgets. I will make the comment that with the changes tonight, the original budget started out at $48,857 above this year's budget. As of tonight, we are $18,357 above this year's budget. So it's a, it's a virtual zero. 30000 yeah. The 30500 was removed. Yeah. So. 
So where would you like to start, Mr. Chair? If so you would like to start, that is. And I have summary sheets if that's helpful. Okay, so. I think that would be helpful. I had a handwrite on it, though, because of some of the changes that just yeah. took place. That's but um, this kind of gives you a summary. It breaks it down um, in each section how the budget is made. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Christy. It's a little printing and a yeah. sharp pencil. Thank you. <laughs> What's wonderful, Christy, is when you put the dates on these, that really helps. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, are you prepared to accept a motion to address the Recreation and Public Works budget? Or do you yes. want them done separately? No, I think we should do them individually. Okay, well, I'll, I'll move uh, that we accept the Recreation budget that we reviewed. Second. I, I, I would modify that motion. We need dollars and cents from finance oh. for the exact numbers. You want the exact numbers. It's page two of the report yeah, she just gave uh, you. It's one million one hundred and thirty-seven thousand and eleven dollars. That will cover section uh, G, which is culture and recreation. Right. Has library, recreation and parks, patriotic purposes, town beautification, and conservation commission broken down. So that segment. Yep. Then I, if I may adjust my motion, I'll be prepared to move that we accept the one million one thirty-seven oh one one to cover those five purposes. I'll second that. And is there any discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Number two, we have the board determination on budgets for other departments. Now you got we public need works. Public yet. works. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, so we're going to uh, go right to public works. Yeah, pursuant to the printout that we just received dated 10 5 2015 i would move that we accept the figure that we uh, approved at our work session for the department of public works total five million two one eight one three four no second any questions is that the correct number of finance it's right here on the yes. <laughs> just asking the question mm -hmm. yes That's the correct number of finance yes thank you all those in favor unanimous and then with the miscellaneous budget starting with uh, the top of the front page Whoops. for executive <clears throat> and going down through uh, town clerk financial zoning planning general government the total by individual sections and the total by the general government budget so how do you want this I, I will it's move under general government um, total executive 292,233 town clerk 252884 whoops nope. that's 252384 mm -hmm. um, financial admin 1,066818 yep legal 198875 Personnel three million zero one one two four five. Planning board one four zero one six zero. Zoning board five thousand three one zero. <coughs> Total planning and zoning one four five four seven zero. Town buildings one zero two six seven four. Cemeteries one two three seven two five. Muni Insurance three million five zero six two nine two, and Parking Admin seventy five 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 zero, for a total general government of eight million seven seven five two six five. Seven six. Oh, yep. No, it's off to the right. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any questions? Good to go. That's a, the correct number. So that's eight million seven hundred and seventy-five thousand two hundred and sixty-five. Yes. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. And then we have the fire budget. We'll do that separately. Uh, you, will you accept a motion to approve the fire department budget that has just been reviewed? That's four million zero three zero seven six four. Oh, I'm sorry, police, police department. department. I apologize, police. But 
that one. And that's it, changed. Yes. Yeah, four million zero three zero yep. seven six four. That's the correct number. Yep. That's for the police department. That's the correct. police department. Yes. I'll second that. Okay. Any further questions? All those in favor, unanimous. I'll move that we accept the fire department figure after our review this evening uh, with a total of 3,440,395. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Um, in, building Christy, what about building and code enforcement? Building and code, uh, Kevin was here last Wednesday. Right. And so that's the amount, the two, <laughs> that's the one that he brought forward to you guys. I don't believe anyone made any adjustments. No. So it's no. 218019. Okay. Okay. And if I may move to accept the building and code enforcement figure after our review, 218019. I'll second that. All those in favor, unanimous. Uh, as of tonight, uh, Chief Sawyer mentioned the emergency management, and there seemed to be no problem. That's $1,000, so I will so move that we accept that. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. And as a final uh, item, the uh, figure for the hydrants, uh, the annual cost for 2016 proved at 494299 Second. That's unanimous. Unanimous. Now, um, did we do the animal control and the mosquito? Yep. Yeah, we uh, did. You didn't do a motion yet. No, no I don't believe yet. we did. No. You reviewed them, so but yeah, we yes. did. Um, no, we didn't. I'll make a motion. The animal control. Well, we did mosquito is control when what's when Anne was in the other night. Yeah, but we didn't. You did not vote on either one. Yeah. I mean, you right. voted on her. Right. Um, and we, bid, did I think. Yeah. Bid. we did Correct. review animal control with Chief Sawyer. Yes. Yeah, but we you haven't done that. Right. The motion. I'll make a motion. Yeah. I'll make a motion that uh, we pass animal control at 59934. Second. All those in favor? And now the mosquito control. I'll make the motion for 103250. Second. All those? In favor, unanimous. Wow. Did you do the welfare too? No? We did not. You have not oh, voted no. on welfare. Okay, yet. I'll make a motion that we pass God bless you. welfare 51017. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. And then the last one would be the municipal debt. We talked about that on uh, Wednesday. Also. also, move the municipal debt service 2,996298. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. So that handles it. That's it. That handles all of the budget, yes. Thank you. We appreciate everything you've done for us. Uh -huh. Made it very easy and, and we could read it. To the last minute we had to change things. Thank you. Yep. Other old business. Mr. Bridal. Nothing. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley? No. Mr. Bean. No, sir. And we have Christy. We'll wait until Mr. Uh, yeah. We have Christie's memo on the audit. Can services. we start the, the yeah. brief on the audit? It seems pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you like me to give a quick give briefing? Give us your opinion and your quick. My your opinion. Quick um, I expressed in the memo <laughs> that I had sent. Um, we sent out an RFP. We heard got res we sent it out personally to. Um, eight different um, vendors. We heard back from three. I gave a breakdown. We heard back from Plodzik and Sanderson, Vachon, Cleque and Company, and Melanson, Heath and Company. Um, Plodzik and Sanderson was the second little bidder. There was a difference of $2,220. So I am coming to the board asking for a waiver to so with the second low bidder, um, there is savings still. It was 31500 whereas last year it was in the budget at 33500 So there's a $2,000 savings budget-wise. Um, mm -hmm. But that is uh, the breakdown there. And probably a larger saving time-wise. Uh, I'm happy to move to uh, accept the... Uh, why don't we wait until Mr. Waddell comes oh. back? <laughs> we 
waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Wolsey is going to make a motion. Oh. I'm happy to accept the uh, finance director's recommendation on the 2015-021 audit services to grant the purchasing policy waiver uh, as in section 718-4 period is A, subsection 1 through 4. In the amount of? We're waiving it. Uh, wait a minute, I'm going to get the figure in here. Bear with me. It's 31500 Yes. Uh, for the first year with an additional 300 over the course of the uh, three-year three year RFP. Bid. So, um, yeah. But it's 31500 each year. And then 150 more the next year. Uh, let's see, I should have put the grand total on there. Hold on one sec. It'll be so it'll be ninety-four thousand eight hundred over the course of the three, three years. years. Yep. It was a three. It was an RFP for three years. Yep. I'll second. All those in favor, unanimous. And did you have any old business, Mr. Wardell? No. Okay. Moving on. Thank you, Christy. Mm -hmm. Moving on to new business. We doing so, these. Warren articles that Fred gave us. Yeah, we, uh, we just you, you did been, that, right? been <laughs> to do yeah. business. Yes, you're okay. you're accomplished. So, do we have any new business, Mr. Waddell? No. Mr. Bridal? No, thank you. Mr. Bean? Negative, sir. Mrs. Walsh. Yes, Mr. Uh, Welch's memo, dated October second, on the Warren articles. Do you want? Do you want? Uh, what do you suggest, I, I, Mr. I, I would appreciate an opportunity to speak to the board. Um, I have well, I have two items that need to be uh, formally voted for the board. One is the MS 535 that the finance director brought down this evening, which needs to be oh. signed by the yes. board. And I have um, the renewal for the health insurance for town employees, which the board needs to authorize me to sign. So I need those two things done so I can I can continue to process that information. So I'll move that we sign the M MS-35? MS-535. 535. They keep on changing it. The number is going to get so long they can't print it. For the finance office. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? To authorize the manager to sign. Oh, no, we have to sign. For you have it, to right? sign the 535. Okay. okay. I'm in favor. All those in favor? Unanimous. And what was the other? The, the other, Mr. Chairman, was I sent the board a, a notification, a memorandum, uh, on the second, citing a number of different warrant articles that traditionally appear in our warrant mm -hmm. every single year, mm -hmm. uh, asking whether or not the board would, in fact, approve those so I can forward them on to the budget committee. Um, Conservation Command, uh, Conservation Land Acquisition Fund. For twenty thousand dollars, that's a ten ten thousand dollar increase over the past two years, mm -hmm. um, because of the the need to continue to build that account. The human service agencies at one seven six four seven five, and that's assuming the two missing are uh, at the two thousand fifteen level. Mm -hmm. The highway block grant for paving, which is um, six four three two two five, it's an increase of three seventy five five seven six. And the state has increased it from 167000 to almost $300,000 in, in uh, 167649 to 299804 hmm. And I understand that's going to continue to increase for several more years. Don't say that too loud. The light dawned on Marblehead that there was a, uh, light, a piece of legislation that passed that set a four and a half cent increase in the gasoline tax and we got to receive 30 percent of that for each year that is billed before it sunsets and the state had originally reneged on that but they've decided that probably they ought to pay it there's been a lot of grief about that so they're going to pay it to us so our costs are going up and so is the amount of money we're receiving um, the other one would be the P police forfeiture <coughs> special revenue fund which has no impact tax impact at all. We do that every year. It's $90,000. The Recreation Special Revenue Fund, again, no tax impact. That's $115,000 in the warrant article. The Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund, which is $300,000, no increase over prior years, and it's been $300,000 now for several years. 
and the uh, amend the disposal of surplus town equipment and materials ordinance that would allow, with the selectman's permission, us to market uh, yep. surplus steel and scrap metals um, instead of just auctioning them off. We can get more money by selling them to a an authorized junk dealer or a salvage dealer. So those were the, the articles that uh, I was requesting the board to consider and perhaps approve if you could, and we would then forward those on to the budget committee. So do we need a motion? You would need a motion to approve, sir. All of them at the same time? Uh, that's up to you. I am happy to make a motion to approve uh, the one, two, four, five, six, and seven. I want to pull the highway block grant out for the moment. Okay, yeah. well, let's discuss it first. Well, all right. I don't want to see the highway block grant put in there without stipulating specific streets and roads that are going to be done. It was part of our success, I think, with the block grant this year. Fairfield, Ruth, and Belmont. I'm sure that the DPW has its list of critical roads and streets that need to be worked on. And I think the smartest way to present this to the public is to show them specifics on what is going to, what commitment is made to what roads and streets. I think alternatively that, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, that uh, given, uh, say, a hurricane that maybe didn't touch down, uh, it handcuffs Public Works, it's an unnecessary restriction, and I think uh, Mr. Welch and the Public Works Director can effectively administrate those funds on their own without selectmen's guidance. Mr. Welch, what do you say? Mr. Chairman, it's certainly a board decision. Um, the funds are allocated for paving for streets, sidewalks, um, very miscellaneous things dealing with individual street pavings. Um, the, the, the department is going to set a, a list of streets in the spring after the snow is gone because we're going to have some that are going to fall apart so badly between now and then, mm -hmm. particularly over the winter, that to give you a list now we may have to change it. I don't want to give you a list that would be changed. Um, for instance, I know that it's not even on the horizon for the department to look at the end of Landing Road, but something has to be done down there. Yeah. Mary Bachelor Road is about six years down the, uh, the list. Uh, I looked at it the other day, and I'm not sure it's going to last the next spring. Right. So there's going to be some changes as we go along, and, and I would ask the board, and we certainly report to you before we do the work, uh, what needs to be done and because of the changes over this coming winter. And what do you have to say about that, Mr. Bridal? Uh, I think uh, with, with the past year and what the... Uh, uh, the response has been from Public Works. Uh, they, they are working at it really hard. Uh, I think to handcuff them at this point in time, uh, I think would be wrong. We need to uh, wait until spring. As the town manager said, uh, a lot can happen over, s over four or five months, and and uh, certain roads can can uh, can definitely uh, fail much quicker so uh, I have no problem with it the way it was presented and I Mr. agree with Selectman Bean and Selectman Bridal okay does someone else want to make a separate a different me uh, motion I make a motion that we accept the highway block grant as except that the highway block grant as written and the other warrant articles pass them on yes that all of the ones we've discussed tonight is there a second I'll second all those no, in favor? No, second to what, Mr. Waddell's motion? Yes. I just want to understand. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Oh, I'm opposed. And one, four and one. Yeah. Other new business, Mr. Waddell? No. Mr. Waddell? All set, thank you. Mrs. Wolseley? No, thank you. Mr. Bean? Negative, sir. I will have for your next meeting, Mr. Chairman, um, some detailed information on the outstanding warrant items that okay. were su su submitted to mm -hmm. uh, the town by the individual departments. Uh, we've been working on them feverishly, and I will tell you that we're um, discarding a number of them. Yeah. We're combining some of them. Yeah. Good. Uh, and hopefully uh, you will see a substantial change 
in both the articles to be presented and the amount of money that it's going to cost to, uh, to appropriate for them. That was a good recap, though, because it was good thinking to, to see an overview of the possibilities. That was the idea, and, and we're looking at uh, all other possibilities as far as funding is concerned, outside sources, surplus, everything. So yeah. we will have a, an overview for you before your next meeting. Good. Oops. Closing comments. Done. Mr. At, Bridal? At, uh, at our, after our adjournment, I'd make a motion that we go into a non-public under 91A, RS, uh, RSA 91A, semicolon. Uh-oh. I thought you could or, roll that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, personnel matters. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Aye. 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 And is there a motion for adjournment? I'll make a motion to adjourn. At what hour? 2045. Second. Oh. I think this goes with those. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Aye. Aye. I guess the rest of the clock good. Has All those in favor, unanimous. Hasn't moved Thank to second. That's right on time. Thank you, gentlemen.